Hello everyone, my name is Kevin Carpenter and I'm a middle school math and science teacher. Today I'd like to show you a fun project that I worked on with my fifth grade science students in the fall of 2020 in a presentation I call Rocket Science. This project came about as an application of our study in the principles of physics. We covered different types of friction in their applications, and learned about how squirrels use physical properties to run a backyard obstacle course created by Mark Rober. we study Newton's laws of motion. For every unit we do, I try to develop a project-based learning activity that applies what we've learned. So a natural application of things we'd studied like air resistance and equal and opposite reactions was to create and launch rockets. Mark Abrat, my partner teacher and I, wanted to make sure we had enough supplies for every student, both on campus and virtual. So we checked with Laura Jowers, our middle school department chair, who gave us the green light, and then with Cindy Prosky, our middle school director, who immediately approved the expense. Our supply list included about 90 rocket kits in three different styles, rocket engines, tubes of super glue, along with three launch pads and remote launchers. Mr. Bra was also inspired to create several other launch remotes and launch pad materials that we would develop with the help of his tech students. The week before Thanksgiving break, we notified parents of virtual students that each student had a rocket kit waiting for them here at the school. And they came throughout the week to pick them up. We've been hyping the project for a while in class, so the kids were excited to get started. We are going to do rockets today. The day we returned from the break, we demoed the launch process and the construction began. If any of you have ever tried to teach students in class and online at the same time, you know it's not easy. Now we are attempting to show two groups of fifth grade students how to use superglue, follow complicated instructions, and solve perplexing problems in an educational environment that was already complicated and perplexing. To add a degree of difficulty, not all of our virtual students picked up the same rocket model, so Mark and I would have to try to give multiple sets of instructions to our classes at the same time. As teachers, these were some of the most intense days of our semester. Alrighty, Sean, show me what you got. Okay. Turn it around so I can see all sides. Fortunately, the students were engaged. All right, it'll go in more than that because you've got the black ring is sticking out. Keep pushing it in until it comes out the top of the fence. Oh. There you go. Good. As educators, I would say that one of the most important jobs we have is to help spark the excitement to learn and then provide students with the opportunities to meet and overcome the challenges that learning presents. Mr. Rott and I felt that even if there was a failure to launch, we succeeded in giving the kids a hands-on learning experience that applied the concepts we were teaching and added layers of additional learning experiences as well. For example, to make this project more steamy, I showed students how to spray paint their rockets so they could consider both the form and the function of their designs, and many of the results were breathtaking. It was almost a shame we'd have to blow up, burn, and lose a few of those on launch day. On December 9th, we paraded the 5th graders across the street to the high school to watch our creations fly. Some of these rockets fly up to 1,100 feet in the air, so we'd hope to have optimal conditions to watch them soar. With a clear blue sky, low winds, and a temperature of about 65 degrees, the day turned out to be perfect. I'd invited one of my former students, Matteo Berard, to help take some footage of the launch with his drone, and his work did not disappoint. We also had staff and student photographers on hand from Alicia Merrifield's yearbook class and Melissa Borromeo's marketing team to make sure we captured the moment. One additional aspect we added to this project was a research and presentation component called the Physics of Flight Project. Students were asked to choose from several different flying machines such as a helicopter, Japanese Zero, Saturn V rocket, or SR-71 Blackbird, or from pioneers of flight such as the Wright brothers, Chuck Yeager, Amelia Earhart, and the Tuskegee Airmen. Students could even choose a type of bird to research and study to recognize the patterns in the physics behind how things fly. After our launch, we chose our topics, did our research, and put together our presentations. Here are a few. Amelia Earhart was born in Atchison, Kansas in the U.S. She was a very energetic child and loved to go on adventures. When she got older, she saw her very first air show and went on an airplane for the very first time. 
From the moment she got in the plane, she knew this was what she wanted to do. After a few years of training, she went on to break 15 world records and prove to the world that women could be just as good aviators as men. Now let's talk about Amelia Earhart's plane. Before we do so, I want to talk a little bit about birds. Why? Because they're amazing. Mainly because chickens are birds. But aside from that, they provided us with an amazing idea. The idea of flight. Now you might be wondering, how does this hummingbird hover? Well, it might seem like this hummingbird is flapping back and forth, forward and backwards, but actually its wings are moving in such a way that each flap is an upstroke and each flap is also a downstroke. See, he moves his wings in this kind of figure eight pattern. So when he moves his wing down, he gets lift and also when he moves his wing up back to put it down he also gets lift this makes them great flyers and so in the end this project taught us all a few things as teachers we learned that we could indeed run a project-based learning experience in a hybrid learning environment i personally became much more excited and engaged as the project developed and our work changed from videos and simulations of scientific phenomena to actual hands-on activities that got us out of our seats and our classrooms. Our students as well showed a good understanding of concepts we taught. As an open question on our summative test, students were given the prompt, use key terms from our study of physics to explain how rockets or other flying machines fly. The responses were thoughtful and on point. Of course, years from now, most of the fifth graders won't remember their answers to the essay questions on our test. I do hope, however, they'll remember the excitement they felt watching something they built soar into the sky.